This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Joining us today is Jeffrey Madison, the CEO of Stark Resources, who are, of course, the people who are building the plant on site at the Zulu Lithium Project for Premier, Premier African Minerals. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Jeffrey. It's good to be talking to you again. How are things? Uh, good afternoon, Mark. Yeah, thank you very much for, for having us on again. Things are good on our side. Um, pretty busy, as you as you. Um, can sure imagine at Zulu. So mm -hmm. are we looking forward to giving some more um, fruitful updates on the project is where we're at, and in particular, the changes that have taken place. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, hopefully we can get a few questions answered. Of course, some of the latest news from Premier African Minerals was all centred around the milling circuit, wasn't it? And that, of course, that EDS mill wasn't quite up to scratch, and the RHA mill was being moved in and converted to work. And we have seen media of that ball mill actually in operation and circling round. I believe there's another mill on the way from Stark to arrive in the next couple of months or so. But I think you just want to start us off by perhaps just setting the record straight, making a bit of a, a public statement here of where things are at from Stark's point of view with regards to the milling circuit on site. Sure, Mark. So I think I think the at the current juncture where we're at, um, we've we've been through the various evaluation phases to understand exactly where the difficulties were around the EDS mill. Um, and I would like to circle back to EDS specifically. Mm -hmm. And um, we have, uh, together with some international experts on on milling and flotation, looked at the problems that we encountered. We um, established what needed to be done. We did our various simulations that led us to the implementation of this interim solution with the RHA mill, which has now been has now taken place. There was a conversion from a rod to a ball mill, um, which is now fully converted over. The mill is in operation. And as per the simulations and as per the RNS that Prem put out, um, that we would achieve approximately 50% of the nameplate capacity in terms of throughput at the defined feed sizes, well, we can categorically confirm that those facts are true. We are achieving it on a continuous basis, which means that we have ultimately resolved the, the technical issue that we saw around the milling and the grinding of the material in particular. And the prognosis moving forward is fully positive. We've solved the issue. We understand the issues. The remedial actions that have been put in place are as to the simulation. And with the implementation of the larger mill at the end of the beginning of, of, of Q1 of next year, dependent on various factors and to be announced in an, in, in an RNS, we have a handle on the issue of the milling and the grinding and so forth. Um, perhaps to circle back onto the EDS side, uh, the EDS mill is performing well. It's performed um, to specification from an operational perspective. Mm -hmm. And the issues that we encountered in terms of grind size and that were um, in large part to some challenges that we encountered in field and the accelerated nature of the project itself. Um, so I think that EDS should not be put in any sort of ill light here. And I would like to categorically say that as well. They've been very supportive of the project. They're working together with us and with Prem. And... The solution that's required now is just the solution that is best suited to uh, mill and grind the ore that we are currently processing through the plant. So, yeah, that's our statement in terms of that. And Stark is very confident that moving forward with the implementation of the larger mill, that we have a long-term sustainable uh, solution in place to not only grind, but also to economically treat and process the materials that, that, that the Zulu mine is going to be feeding into the pilot plant. Okay. So you're quite categorically stating there that you solved the milling circuit. So, I mean, how are things going in terms of plant performance? Is material being fed? Are you ready to feed material? Are you confident that you will meet those production figures to Prem? 
So maybe to break your question down into a few parts, we are currently feeding material. We are feeding material in from the, 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 the mine. Um, coarse material that's going through the crushing and the screening. We are sorting both through the XRT and the UV. That material is then also going together with fine material and being fed into the, uh, the ball mill. It's operating, it's turning. We are grinding and sending approximately 50% of the defined feed rate against okay. nameplate through to flotation. It's currently doing it as we speak on site. Uh, Jakub Prinsler, our COO, was meant to join us today. Unfortunately, with the connect connectivity issues at Zulu, wasn't able to join, and we will we, we'll touch base with him later on. But I had a call uh, a few minutes before. He's confirmed that there's feed running as we speak. And the current status is the following, is that we've resolved the milling issues, we've resolved the feed rate and flow stability issues to the flotation side. And the next stages are to now fully recommission the flotation section it's the first time that we are seeing consistent stable feed and consistent grind sizes, which is, of course, uh, very, very encouraging. Mm -hmm. And the technical teams from the various OEMs, Prem and Stark, are now obviously optimizing that flotation side. So we are running material through. We are producing spodumene. We are producing uh, mica. Uh, the volumes are not at liberty to say. Uh, that's for Prem and, again, for an RNS. But the process of moving forward is in play, and we are doing so, and we are confident and positive of the results that we are achieving. Okay. In terms well, of prem meeting targets, in terms of grade, in terms of product quality, etc., that's that's not for us uh, uh, to mm. to communicate, uh, nor are we allowed to do so. That is to be done via an RNS and and from prem side. But from our side, from a plant perspective, all systems are running. The, the, the processes are working accordingly and the various teams are doing what they need to do now to ramp up the production of, of the concentrates to come out of the plant. Then, of course, as part of that, we are going to be looking at the optimization of the product qualities and so forth. And that forms part of the, of the regime to get the plant into operation and into a stable producing state. Okay. Well, it's good to hear that you say you're producing spodumene. Of course, you can't comment on volumes. On, of course, you can't comment on Correct. grades. It's market-sensitive news that would have to come from Prem themselves. But just talking about the flotation section, then you talk there about sort of the ramp-up work and optimization work. Is it the case that you can almost go straight to SC6, sorry, 6 percent right now, or will it take a little bit of time? to optimize and get the feed going steady, get the grind size going steady? And how long will this optimization process take? So you're totally correct, uh, Mark, in terms of, of, of the question that you've posed. Um, uh, it's not possible for us to go directly to SC6 straight away. Uh, one, of course, has to understand the ore that's being fed. One needs to, op uh, to optimize the, the various chemical regimes and mass pools and so forth. And we're in the process of doing that. And that will then determine how much uh, product can be produced and what is the re are, are the respective grades. But I would imagine that the Premier would be coming out at some stage to talk around that. And, um, yeah, so I would think that, that one would keep their eyes out for, for, okay. for the next RNS from Prem side. But at the moment, from your point of view, there is consistent feed going. So the optimization work in the flotation section is ongoing at the moment. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. So we are consistently running the mill. We are working out the commissioning bugs and issues. I mean, one needs to consider that the plant stood for several several weeks um, as we did the installation now, and we are going through working out the bugs, and we are seeing consistent feed rates going through the plant in extended uh, plant runs, okay. and we are busy ramping up the production time and overall asset utilization on a daily basis. And there's a consistent upward trend in terms of total plant runtime, volumes processed, et cetera, et cetera. And we are really confident that things are, are, are going in the correct direction. So I guess we will have to wait and for a bit of a timeline there on how the optimization is going or indeed some definitive news from Prem on how that optimization is going and how things are looking. If I can just ask a little bit of questions here on the milling circuit again, because someone sent me a question that basically said, is the mill definitely the final fix to get this into production? 
So that's um, a question I'd like to put to you. So it is definitely the final solution, and um, we have now modeled it. It's been simulated. The simulations have been checked and quantified. We've seen the um, results in field. It produces the required product size and quality that's needed, and we are fully confident that this issue has been resolved. Okay. And that was effectively the the Achilles heel or crux of the 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 problem that in that that resulted in the various delays that one has seen now, and I think that both Prem Stark and obviously very importantly Prem's shareholders and investors can be comfortable now that the the road forward is a positive road forward and and we have solved the issue. Okay, and if I can just ask another question on the milling circuit, is the this is a question that, that's come to my mind. Is the RHA mill, is it a temporary solution that will then be removed when the, 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 the mill from start gets put in? Will it work? Could it work in conjunction to increase throughput? And then, of course, the EDS mill as well. So you've potentially got three mills here. I'm just wondering how or if they might work in conjunction or individually. So the final solution that will go in from uh, from our side to bring the asset up to nameplate production would not be a hybrid solution between all the rest would be a singular large mill that will go into place as per the, the RNS that was gone out. Perhaps it was not um, explicit enough. And in terms of running all of those mills in, in conjunction with one another, yes, one could do so, but it would result in too much fine material being produced and the downstream process is not being large enough to be able to handle that. Okay. So, of course, one can do that and one can produce more uh, concentrates or mill concentrate, mill feed uh, a product that could go through to the flotation, but it would mean that the flotation side would need to be upgraded. So the solution, of course, now is to have one singular solution, which is uh, stable and proven, and that would then feed the flotation section and move forward, and it would mean that the EDS would, would uh, be removed. And the RHA mill would then be removed and returned to the RHA site so that that asset is, of course, okay. in a position that should it wish to restart, then Prem could restart that uh, at short notice. Okay. I just have a recall in my memory when uh, I think there was an RNS that talked that potentially you could be looking at 125% nameplate throughput. I mean, do you want to make a comment on that? I think I think the comment that I can make is that, that we have um, – spare capacity and, and safety factors that are built into the plant. And we have appropriately sized the mill and the various components and bits and bobs that we have um, acquired now for, as part of this upgrade um, to allow us to exceed nameplate production. Um, so okay. it's perhaps not the definitive answer that you're looking for, but yes, there is very uh, uh, possibly the uh, ability for us to produce more uh, concentrate than, than what was originally designed for. Um, so yes okay well thank you very much Jeffrey that was all nice and clear it's good to hear the confidence there I have a couple of other questions I appreciate you may not be able to comment but one of the questions that I was sent was do you have a target handover date when you're going to hand over effectively from Stark to, to fully prem so we of course have a, a target date um, that target date is dependent on several factors um, and it's going to be somewhere between the end of the year and Q1 of next year. And the, and the final handover target date is going to be defined when we've implemented the larger milling section. And okay. it's now fully up and running and, and then handed over to Prem. Okay. So, yes, we have a target date, um, but the target date is not fully defined. There's a couple of, of um, uh, decisions still to be made from Prem side as to when, how and what. And those would be communicated by via and 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 RNS, of course. What I can say is that the the objective of Prem is to produce as much product on as consistent basis as possible, and have the the least amount of downtime to ensure that Canmax is able to uh, to receive its its product that it requires. And the final decisions of when the plant would be stopped, the mills would be exchanged, etc., would all tie into Prem's conversations with its off takers. Okay, thank you. Another question that came in, this is again about the, the float section, is what happens to the mica content? Are you able to remove this effectively? But I think this is referring to effectively how the, the mica float is going, because it is, of course, a reverse float. The mica comes off first, 
and then you float off the spodumene. Is that something you can make a comment on or is that going to have to be official? I think what I can say is that the flotation section is working to its design uh, specifications um, and we are able to compare the flotation section compared to laboratory results and it clearly shows that it is working. Okay. The specifics of each uh, stage, microflotation, spodumene flotation, etc., I don't think is really relevant. The clear relevant uh, uh, answer that I can give, and for all the and for all the uh, budding home uh, metallurgists that are out there, is that the system is working as per specification and it is being optimized. And the various comments and statements are out need to be in context and answering a spot question on that basis without having the contextual uh, uh, feedback in terms of what feed was there, what was the grade, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera doesn't provide the answer that's really required. Okay. Uh, another question, which is unrelated really, but it was related to Prem really. It's about their LI3 project. Someone would like to know if there are any plans to develop this project with Stark. So I appreciate that's a bit of a, a different subject there. So um, what I can say is that uh, we saw Francois Claire, their CEO, um, and based out of, out of, out of uh, Quebec in Canada at the PDAC earlier in the, in the year. We actually had dinner together with, uh, with the Stark team. Mm -hmm. And we are in conversations with Francois to see how we can support. The project, is, which is known to all, is at a very, very early stage. They've just begun drilling and so forth. And... At an appropriate time, stock services would become uh, appropriate and applicable for that project. And we, we, we are at the disposal of both Prem and LI3 and remain in conversations with Francois and so forth. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I'd just like to get as many questions in from shareholders as possible. With sure. A lot of uh, keen shareholders who have got eyes on lots of different areas of the business. But just to finish off on today, we will hopefully speak to Yaku maybe later in the week. It's a shame we couldn't join us from site, but we can get a, a real first-hand account of how things are looking when he gets back into Johannesburg. There. Yes. But just to summarise, really, is it fair to say that you're, you're pretty happy with what you're seeing or what you're being told that's going on, what you've seen from, from videos from site? Things are working, things are looking on track, and things are looking on time from Stark's point of view. Yes, absolutely. So, and, and there's no question around that. The, the 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 anxiety that we had around the resolution of the milling problem was really the cornerstone of our concern. The rest of the equipment we know works. It was verified independently by Geolabs and in the in the in the the the, the AGM where, where where George spoke about it, and we've resolved that issue. It's now just the road of getting the plant appropriately commissioned, fed stably, consistently, and starting to produce a, a saleable product. And we're in that process. Okay. And when it's going to finish, I can't say, um, but the team is working day and night, literally. And we are fully confident that we will resolve that issue. And I'm sure that that would be, um, uh, that view would be reflected by George and the Prem team as well. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much for giving us your time today, Jeffrey Madison there, the CEO of Stark Resources. We appreciate it, and I hope shareholders do as well. Thank you very much, Mark. We look forward to, to chatting again. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like, or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.